All right. Yeah, show the new apples. How about this first one? Divide. Let's grab this one and go working on the. Can we do the least and greatest We'll do. Yeah, we'll do. But that too. That's another one we need to do. Okay. Uh, well, if they didn't, it would just be zero for an answer. Oh. Yeah. Okay, we ready? Yes, sir. All right. So if we're going to divide the, the numerator by the denominator, we can have long division. we got to set it up. We, I think everybody's pretty good with this part. Which one goes out front? The x squared plus yeah. okay, the bottom. x plus 6. And then inside, we get this guy. Now, what do I have to do when I write it down, though? Make sure you add, like, the x to the third and stuff. Yeah, okay, I have to have a column for every power of x. And so this one's missing the x cubed term, so i got to put a 0 x cubed there. That's crucial. If, if you miss that, it really in increases your odds of missing the problem. So 4x to the fourth plus 0x cubed, make it in red so we can really highlight that, plus 5x squared plus 2x plus 9. Okay, how do we get the ball rolling here? What do we do? Don't yes, ma'am. Command the first. Okay, good. So we want to go leading term outside dividing into leading term inside. So we'll say 4x to the fourth over x squared equals what? 4x squared. 4x squared. squared. And that's our first term in the answer, right? Then what? Don't you subtract it. Times 4x. Times it. Okay, distribute it all the way through. Good. And and you, this is something else people are just not doing that I really think you got to do. Let's put, let's do that, right? We're, we're going to make sure that we get this thing in brackets and subtract the whole thing, because that's the most common place people make an error once they get to this point, is they 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 lose track of if, they, if they're subtracting or adding or that kind of stuff. So if we distribute it all the way through 4x squared times x squared, there's our 4x to the fourth. Of course, those have to be the same, because they have to cancel. 4x squared times 2x is 8x cubed, 4x squared times 24. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry, 4x squared times 6, 24x squared. I'm going to subtract the whole thing. Yes, I'm hearing lots of talking. I really don't want to hear that right now. Okay. So if we subtract vertically, those cancel. 0x cubed minus 8x cubed is negative, negative 8x cubed. Okay. Well, why negative? Because we're oh, minus sign. Got it. That's why we're doing that minus sign. Remember, the pattern is we always go top to the minus sign to the bottom, right? Okay, 5x squared minus 24x squared, negative 19x squared. Say it again. Distribute the negative. I mean, you you could, I suppose. You could if you if you wanted to. I, I think as long as you get in the habit of, of just doing this, getting that pattern, it's just as good. And then I to me, in my experience when people have done that, they get they still get confused because what if they forget? You know, if, or, or have they done it or haven't they? You know, I mean it's I don't know, to me it just seems like it's like it's if you get into a pattern and you're the same every time and this is a pretty simple way to do it. I it's just my recommendation, but if you want to do it that way, you can. Uh, bring down the other two terms, right? And start again. Put 2x. Okay, so now we're going to do negative 8x cubed, right? Yep. Uh, 0x cubed minus 8x cubed, right? And, you, all you, and here's another little hint. All you're really, you know the answer is going to be x cubed, right? You know that you're in the x cubed column, so just focus on the numbers. 0 minus 8 is negative 8, right? You automatically know that the x cubed is going to follow. I think it was asking where you got the actual 8x cubed. Oh, oh, okay. That makes sense? Yeah. Okay, gotcha. 
Uh, so if we now if we go leading term, you to start over again. But we're not going to divide by the 2x. We always divide by the x squared. Oh, we always divide that? by, right? So we got now we have negative 8x cubed divided by the leading term outside, x squared. And what's that equal to? Negative 8x. Right? And we distribute that through. So we get negative 8 x cubed, negative 8x times positive 2x, negative 16x squared, right? Mm -hmm. Negative 8x times positive 6, negative 48x, right? Mm -hmm. And if we subtract the whole thing, right? And let's just focus on the numbers part, right? So I'm going to get negative 8 minus negative plus Zero. 8 cancels, of course. Negative 19 minus negative, so plus 16. Negative 3x. 2 minus negative 48, so plus. 50x. There we go. Okay. All right, and we start over. Okay, last time through. So let's see, now we get negative 3x squared over x squared is. Negative 3. Negative, negative 3. Okay, and now that's a constant, so we know this is the last hurrah. That one's, this is the last time we got to go through the thing because once you get down to the constant, there's nowhere to go, right? It, but the remainder, we'll get to that. So we'll distribute the negative 3 all negative the way three through. And negative 3x squared, negative 3 times positive 2x. Negative 6x. Negative, six. negative 3 times positive 6. Negative, negative 18. Or 18. There you go. Okay, if I subtract, now I'm going to get the cancel, right? 50 minus negative 6 is 56. Oh my god. 56 x 9 minus negative, so plus 18. Okay, so that's my remainder, isn't it? Now, what did the question ask? If we go back up to the top, it said, if the remainder is written in the form ax plus b, what's the value of a? So they're asking for the coefficient of x. So what's it going to be? 56. 56. Yeah, that's it. Okay? All right? Okay, moving on. Uh, greatest and least real zeros. Okay, this one... This should be an absolute gimme because you'd be crazy not to just use that program that I told you how to use. And if it's not on a calculator, get one that has it. That's a great thing to know how to use. So this is purely just 100% graphing calculator question. Is that Aqueduct? Uh, well, you could. I think you can use Aqueduct too. But the one I the one I was referring to was the PolySmolt 2. Kind of an ugly name, but it's a good program. So if we go apps. Wait, can I make sure my hands up? Yeah. Don't do and, and like I say, if it if yours doesn't, I can put it, I can put it even on the 83s. I can put it on any calculator, that's fine. If yours doesn't so have on, it though. Like, okay, so apps. If yours doesn't have it, why not just borrow one for the test that does have it? Uh, where, did, where are we going? Uh, I've got. A, I've always got it. Always got it oh, Apps or program? program. Apps. Apps. You go apps. I'll have two applications. I got a program. I got a program. Now I got nothing on the apps. Apps. Wait. Yeah, I just go alpha p. I know. I got inequality. Okay. Yeah, this one does have a lot. Okay, I'm going to wait. Okay, it's, it's poly smolt 2. The poly, the part that you want, the, the smolt, I think, is simultaneous equation solver. But that's not what we want. We want the poly part, the polynomial solver. Okay, so that's that's why that, you know, that's the first part is what we're interested in. Hit enter, hit any key to continue, and now you're going to do the polynomial root finder. So you're just going to hit enter or 1. Right now, this is super easy to use. Couldn't be easier. I'm going to make a couple recommendations, though, like I did last time. Let me just reiterate this because I think this is helpful. Uh, the order of the polynomial means what? Uh, 
The highest, uh, same as degree. It's the highest power of x, right? So for us, it's a 4, right? It needs to be a 4. Now, it'd be nice. I don't know why this is not functional, but for some reason, you don't get, it crosses out the, uh, the, the real. You can't just get the real answers. It has to give you, for some reason, all the solutions, including the imaginary solutions. We don't want those. This question specifically asks for the greatest real and the least real, right? If now, so here's my recommendation: when you get down to this line where it says float, if it just if you leave it on float, the problem with that is when you get imaginary answers, they're hard to distinguish from the other ones because they show up with a ton of decimal places. So what I would do is I would go down, and it says round your answers to what? Uh, it just says integers, isn't it? Doesn't. Oh, it's integers. Okay. Yeah. So enter them. I don't think that's right. I think I need to change that. I think it could be rounded. So let, let's. I think it's supposed to be two decimal places. So let's just put it on two. How about? So we'll go down and we'll put float on two. And then we'll just hit next. So we hit F5. And then we get to put in all the coefficients, right? So. Now look with, look at the little uh, template they give you up at the top. It says a4 times x to the fourth plus etc cetera, etc. Cetera, a1x plus a sub zero. So the subscript is just matching the power of x, right? So we would this is going to be the coefficient of x to the fourth. It just goes in order in standard form. So that's a four. We go down and make a341. We make a2113. We make a194. And we make the constant a0168. And then what? Solve. Solve. F5. Yeah. And voila. Gives it to you. Now notice, see the bottom two have eyes in it. So we're just going to skip those. We don't care about those. We just care about the real solutions. And my two real solutions are negative 4 and negative 6. So which is the greater of the two? Negative 4. The lesser of the two? Negative 6. Now, if they were all imaginary, what would we put? 999. 999. Yep, exactly. OK? Make sense? Now, something came up on, I just saw this once, but somebody had one yesterday. And the graphing calculators will do this periodically. They had answers that looked like this, and then the bottom two said something like, well, it had some decimal plus or minus. It was like 2.3 e negative 7 times i. What does that mean when your calculator tells you it's something not like notation. It is. And what it's telling you is it's a number like 2.6 plus or minus point zero 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 zero. So what it's really trying to do that's the calculator making an error. And they'll do that sometimes. They'll make numerical errors. And so what it's really trying to say is some number plus zero i. So it should have been should have been real. If you get something like that, I would recommend that you graph it. Just make sure. Because probably it's made a little error. I, I don't know why it does that. I think it's rare that it'll do that. Especially if you round it, I don't think it should. If you round it, I think it'll be, I think it'll just show up as a zero i when you'll see that it's zero. Um, but I, I don't know. Yeah, if that comes up, just ask me and I can help you a little bit. Okay, questions on that? Make sense? Use the program. The program is so easy to use. It's an absolute freebie. It'll do all the work for you. But I want you to know how to use it. That's why I put it on the test. Yeah. Will you do it Yes, I will. Yeah. Okay, next. Uh, this one. When a polynomial function, this is another one that I think was missed quite a bit. Let's see. What number is that? Seven. Eight was worse. Let's do. Oh, that's what we're doing. Eight. Yeah, eight. People missed eight quite a bit. Okay. Uh, so, what do we do with this now? If, we, if they're giving us all the the zeros. <laughs> They're giving us all the zeros. This is also a really easy one. The calculator doesn't help you a ton with this. 
but you don't really need it anyway. Uh, if they're giving you all the zeros, I'm just going to take each of these zeros, x equals 4, x equals negative 0. That's just 0, right? There is no negative 0. That's just Moodle doing a weird thing. Uh, and then x equals 3i. And I've got to turn those into factors and multiply them out. But there's something, there's a really key concept here that you've got to remember. What is that? They switch. Good. The i's have to come in pairs. So with this one, we also have to get negative 3i. Good. And so then our, our factors are going to look like we always just subtract that number from x. So the first one is good. x minus 4. The next one is x minus 0, which is the same thing as plain old x, right? Oh. Right? Okay. Then x minus 3i, x plus 3i. And this is going to make, this is actually be a pretty easy one because I can distribute that x through really easily, right? And then x minus 3i times x plus 3i, that's where we always want to start. What's that going to give us? x squared, the cross terms, the plus 3ix and the minus 3ix will always cancel. And then last times last, negative 9i squared. And what's i squared? So that always changes that to a positive, right? Multiplying by negative 1. So this becomes x squared plus 9. Okay, and then what about here? If I go ahead and distribute that x through, I get x squared minus 4 And that's all. I mean, now I just have to multiply those out, right? That's not a real big deal. If I take this x squared and distribute it all the way through, x to the fourth, x to the fourth x squared. plus 9x squared minus 4x cubed, and then minus 36. Okay. And if I put those in standard form, I'd have to flip those around, right? What does it want on this one? Uh, it wants the coefficient of x squared. So there are no like terms to add up. But I have to check that, though. Right? If, there were, if there were like terms, I'd have to combine them. But there's the x squared term, and so our answer is 9. Okay? So taking plus 9. Right? Make sense? Yeah. All right. And let's see. Last one. Okay, and this, you know, this I think was pretty good, but it, it wasn't perfect, and it should be. Nobody should ever miss this one. This one is, is an absolute giveaway. Quadrat All you're doing here is cubic regression, right? They want to know, they're asking you for the cubic polynomial written in standard form that goes through those points. So all you do is plug the points in, right? So we just get out of here. Let's see, how do we get out of here? Maybe we go main and then quit. Ah, oh, there we go, six. Okay. And so we'll just go stat, calc, or stat, and, uh, edit. Put all those points in. So negative four for x values, three, six, and 11. Those are our x values. Go over and match them up with the corresponding y values. So 0, 0, 0, 32. Oops. Like that. OK, and now what? Yeah, stat, calc. Cubic regression is 6. Good. Cubic regression, and yours looks a little different, but if you just go to the bottom and hit, what does it say, solve or something like that? And then there's your there's your model. Ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d. They wanted, in this case, the coefficient of x cubed. So that's a uh, rounded to how many places? Four. So it would be 0 0.0533. Okay? That's it. That's, that's an absolute freebie. Right? Okay, but it's important to know how to do that. That's actually a really valuable was that tool. Last yeah, it was. Last mm -hmm. Make sense? Yeah. Okay.
So there's the graphing calculator test. How far should we be in chapter seven? Uh, well, I mean, you want to be staying caught up. You know, you want to be working on, if not done with seven four. Well, I said working on, if not done with. Yeah. Okay. Uh, is there time? I mean, do you want to? Do you want to? Is there time to even mess with going down there? Do you want to just yeah, go through the non-graphing calculator test? Or? I, we might, no, being as we're no, here, we no, might as well, no, I think. No. And then tomorrow, I'll let you guys work on this. Too much, too much, I can't remember how to do the graphing. What's that? Okay. Yeah. Let me look at. Let me look at that one, and we'll just see. Okay, a lot of people miss this. What do we do with this guy? If I've got, if I'm dividing, everybody, listen, listen up, please. If I'm dividing like bases like this, what do I do? This is, no, this is just the chapter seven, two assignment. But there's, I, I want to do this one real quick because a lot of people miss this. And, and so I, I, I want to just head off some problems at the past. Then I'll go around to the non-graphic. Got it all ready to go. But I, I just remembered I wanted to do this today. So, so what about this? What do I do? Amanda, you're going to answer a question? Oh, no, I was just going to say that dividing like bases is just the fraction. Okay, right. So, so we know if we have like bases, we're going to just subtract exponents, right? Three sevenths is bigger than one seventh, so we'll keep it on the bottom. Yeah. One, 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 one over six and two sevenths. Yeah, okay, so one over, and then six to the... Three sevenths minus one seventh, so that's one over six <laughs> to the two sevenths, right? Okay, here's the problem with that. That is numerically correct, but we don't want to have. Okay, I, I'm getting kind of tired of waiting for people to do stuff that's not at all related to what I'm talking about here. We don't want to have radicals in the bottom. Remember, we couldn't have square roots in the bottom. If we want to simplify this, it wants us to simplify. Yeah, I can't have a fractional exponent in the bottom. I can't in the top, right? But I don't want to have one in the bottom. Easy to fix. So how, what am I going to do with this? If I've got 6 to the 2 sevenths, 1 over 6 to the 2 sevenths. So 6 to the 2 sevenths on the bottom. And I don't want to have a fractional exponent on the bottom. I need to get on the bottom a 6 to the 1, right? I want to get a 6 to just an integer power, and the 1 is the easiest. So I'm going to multiply by something to get 6 to the 1 on the bottom. i got to do the same thing, top and bottom. 5 sevenths. 5 sevenths, right. What am I going to add? 1 is the same as 7 sevenths. So I'm just going to multiply top and bottom by 6 to whatever I, I add to 2 sevenths to get 1. Because when we multiply like bases, we add exponents. So it would be 5 sevenths, right? Good. There you go. Good. And so on top, then, we're just getting 6 to the 5 sevenths. On the bottom, we're getting 6. We wouldn't even write the 1 there, would we? It would just be 6. And that's pretty easy to, there's an easy way to maybe do like a mental trick here that's useful. I'm just going to, if I've got a, a two sevenths on the bottom, I just know automatically that I'm going to have to bump that up top and bottom by five sevenths, right? And so that's what I'm going to end up with on the top without even writing this out probably. And on the bottom, I'm going to get my one, six to the one. Yes, ma'am. Uh, because, because two sevenths plus what equals one? Okay. And so then we would just input this in Moodle like, I guess we can go here, can't we? I, yeah, I would. I mean, it's way easier. So if we just, if we used, so we're going to have a 6 to the 5 sevenths on the top. So here we're going to get 6. And then might as well, see, I can use that little template there. To the power of 5 sevenths. over 6, right? And now that should be fine. Yep. 
Okay? Yep. Say, you mean, could, could you type that as a radical, you mean? Uh, you could, sure. So we, we, we could write that. I think this is the question. It's kind of awkward to do, though, because this is, if I wrote that using radicals, it looks a lot harder. I'd have to write this. I can't have a radical on the bottom. Well, I, I didn't even think of calling that. Oh, radical, oh. Radical, yeah, it, unless it tells you, uh, like, to use rational exponents or something. Then it wants you to use rational exponents. There are some. I'm trying to remember how I wrote this assignment, but I think there's some on here. If I go down, how come it's changed? Like, how come we do it? How come we have another in there? These are those new questions that I've been building. These are like the latest ingredients. They they take a while to build, but they're really nice. From your end, they're really nice to use. Like these right here. See, I want you to write this using a radical. So do you need to use that two I would. Yeah. I mean, you, you on these you really do. I, I could have on this last one. Uh, I could have done without it, but it would have been awkward. To enter that, I would have to enter it like I would in, in the old Moodle. I'd have to say something like this. 6 to the 5 sevenths divided by, and that's kind of, you know, I mean, you could do that if you wanted. But you might as well use that nice template there so you can see. You know, it's literally what they call that is a what you see is what you get edited. Well, I have a question about Maybe answer right. shouldn't make any difference. Show it to me. It shouldn't make any difference because it's. I think it does. Mm, show me, show me. If it's, I, I can. Maybe I need to fix something. But yeah, it shouldn't do that. It should be, should work either way. Okay, moving on. Minutes. Let's see what we can get through here. Yep. Okay, non graphing. Here's, here's the scores. Let's see what they're supposed to be. We can figure out the ones that we're having, having trouble on. Okay, these are all supposed to be out of eight, so that'll give us an idea how we're actually doing on this. One question on how does the whole thing together stack? Oops. Yeah, how do you guys can't see that. Okay, so let's go. Let's see, what's a really low? That's a low one right there. I'm finding the ones that were really bad. So that was a bad one. They're supposed to be out of eight. That was a bad one. That was a bad one. Does that mean 46 people missed that? It means the average score was a 1.41 out of eight. That's bad. See, these were pretty good. Those were pretty bad. So let's let's start with this one. That's number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, so ten. Ten's a bad one. All right, let's do ten. No, no, that's you guys. So what did I say, number 10? Ah, okay. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Have a look. I can see why people missed that. Number 10.
Okay, so how do we do this? Now, they're, look what they're doing here. They give us phones away. Don't want to see any phones. Oh, wait, in your pocket. Put that away, Mac. So x equals 3 is one zero of this polynomial. We want to find the least and the greatest of the other zeros, the remaining zeros, right? Not, the, not x equals 3, but the others. So to do that, remember what we're going to do. We're going to divide out synthetically this zero, right? We're essentially dividing out the factor x minus 3, but we're just we're eliminating that, and we're going to find out what's left when we divide the polynomial by that factor. And then the leftover polynomial is the one that we want to find the zeros of, right? Yeah. What this is really saying is that our original polynomial up here, which is going to be, how about blue, this guy right here, so x cubed plus 13x squared plus 16x minus 192 equals that factor times whatever is left over and we divide it out. We want to find the zero of this because our goal, remember, is to find the zeros of this polynomial, right? So we're setting this thing equal to zero, setting each factor equal to zero and solving. Well, let's find that synthetically. Right? So synthetically, i got to be able to see it. So synthetically, we're going to take these, co these coefficients. So 1 in order, 13, 16, and negative 192. And what goes out front? Plus 3. Plus three. three. We want the zero. Okay. What goes in here? Zero. Zero. And then you drop the one. Uh, because okay, we know it's zero because they told us that that three is a zero of the function. Meaning, if I put it in for x, I'm going to get back zero for my answer. Okay. Right, so we know we're doing a zero. Now we're just going to run this through synthetically. So I bring the one down. One times three is three. three. Plus 13. 16. 3 times 16. 48. 48. 48. Plus 16. 64. 3 times 64. 192. They add to 0. OK, so what is this telling us then? This is telling us that the other factor is x squared plus 16x plus 64, right? That's what we're finding the zeros of. We want to set that equal to 0. So x squared plus 16x plus 64 equals 0. We can solve that any way we want to. We can put it in the quadratic formula, or we can factor it. This factors, and these are going to factor. I made these so they would factor easily. Uh, mine did not factor easily. Yeah, it does. What two numbers multiply to 64 and add no, to 16? No, no, no. Mine. 8. Yeah. 8. Eight. 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 telling you. I know the answer was 2, but it was our... So plus 8 and plus 8. So what are my zeros? What does Moodle say to do in that case? I think it says put them in twice. Enter that value for both answers if they're the same. So negative 8 and 8. See, mine was negative dumb. Eight, I had eight. to do the square root of the quadratic formula, and it was dumb. Okay. Good. Well, I know. Oh, no. 